So I got an email recently from a junior scientist in one of the biggest biopharma companies. He has started his career there as a master's. It's been one to two years and he's not seeing enough of career growth. And he has sent me this email that should I continue with my job or you know continue keep uh, growing in my career ladder instead whether I should go for a PhD, which one I should choose. So I'm going to highlight very practical aspects of some new things which I have learned recently. And then I will leave the decision on to you. My pointers will certainly help you conclude. Now to start with, whether you are a bachelor's or a master's or a PhD, even postdoc, whenever you will start your career, you will feel that, that it's looping. It's not growing. It's not uh, growing the way you want. It's a loop. Like you just go to job, come back, go to job, come back Monday to Saturday and then moves forward. So it, is not just you first thing you should know is that it's not just you who is feeling that way there are many people who feel that way and having said that uh, you know career growth is sometimes not visible on a daily basis or a weekly basis or a monthly basis or even yearly basis also the only way you can compare your career growth is when you compare when you started with the 10 years ahead in the game, right? So once you have skin in the game and you cannot have skin in the game unless you've spent 10 years. Like if I, if you ask me how much growth is there in me from 2013 to 2023 is huge. The way I used to do things then and the way I do things now, it's completely different. Whether you're master's or PhD or postdoc, irrespective of that, uh, you'll always feel that it is looping, but it's not looping. You're learning, okay? And learning keeps increasing your wisdom. Now, having said that, you know, most people uh, don't experience this significant, significant change on a daily basis. They experience it over a period of um, decade, right? So the first few years are going to be toughest, okay? It will feel like you are crawling, whether you are a MSc or a PhD. Once you are in the job, you'll feel like it's crawling, it's not moving forward. But you will need a lot of grit and persistence to overcome this feeling of not non-growth. You'll have to embrace learning experiences learning process on the job learning process and at the same time you'll have to trust in the process and trust that you will improve over a period of time but now coming to the question that whether you should go for a job or a phd let's look at it from the other aspect so so if i if i have to tell you this way that um, nobody in this world can trace back and say PhDs have no contribution in this world. PhDs have tremendous contribution in this world, especially the field of biotech and pharma. So we should never treat PhD as like a burden or think that, okay, you have to spend five years there and there'll be academic and you know no growth. See, most companies as less uh, academia considers PhD as a job because you are earning there, you are getting a fellowship and then you are doing something independently. Right. So it's uncharted territory where you are doing the research. So it's not that you're not in a job. So it's comparable. Now, having said that, you're earning a degree there, you're earning experience there. But recently, I'll tell you, um, there was a job at Sinjin, I guess, or Viacom, I'm not sure, but yeah, Sinjin. So what they had mentioned is M farm with 15 years of experience or PhD with four years of experience. <laughs> so you can imagine that MSc guy with 15 years of experience and a PhD with four years of experience. That's the equivalence they are thinking or they're looking at. So this gives you a clear picture that PhDs will always get a, you know, priority over you unless you are exceptional. So you got into your job in your master's. Good, very good. But if you're not going for your PhD, even if you're growing within the job, make sure that you reach the C level, which is the top level management as soon as possible you are uh, really out of the box and you don't need a degree to support you. So that where, that's where you, it, re it really will work for you. But uh, definitely a PhD with a lesser number of years of experience will outpace you. So that's the truth. All right. So the next thing which I would like to highlight here is once you spend like 10 years in the industry, like now, if you ask anybody to do PhD after 10 years or 15 years, he can't go and do it, right? Because he has to start from scratch. And probably that learning ability, sitting for long in a lab and doing things, that habit goes away, right? We uh, become more of, you know, tied to a salary and stuff. So it becomes very difficult to go back. And once you have family and kids, it's very difficult to go and do PhD. So that's where, you know, it's 
good to do your PhD early. Additionally, you know, there is an age limit for males, it is 30, 28 and for females, it is 33. After that, they don't allow, the government doesn't allow you to do a PhD with a fellowship. Of course, you can do PhD with, without fellowship, but that will cost you. So my suggestion to you is if you're planning to do PhD, finish it off within the first few, uh, you know, early years of your career because later on, it's going to be a burden. That's the first point. The second point is it is not necessary for you to do a PhD. Okay. You can grow in the industry or academia without it also. However, especially in academia, any PhD will easily outpace you and government keeps coming with stupid regulations, which, which changes the rules. And then they say that you are disqualified. You cannot apply for this job. Only a PhD can apply. So these kind of limitations can be there. But will it be limiting to your growth and potential? No, it won't be. So the answer to your question, whether you should go for a job or a PhD, certainly PhD if you want to do it. But you should know this, that it will not stop your growth and uh, potential if you don't if you choose not to do it at the same time the comparison will always be there that you are not a phd and you are a phd but hardly matters if you are established renowned scientist with published papers and patents whether you are msc or phd hardly matters but again i would like to reiterate this is not a video where i want to favor phds or mscs I'm here to favor you because it, at the end, you are going to face the problems in the future. And I'm just doing here some analysis for you. So my analysis should not impact your decision or uh, change your decision. I'm just here to tell you that do it right while you still have time. Because later on, if when we don't have time, we'll start regretting. And that time you cannot change your, you know, career path. That's one thing. Now, a lot of students ask me that, uh, okay, I'm, I have no interest in writing competitive exam. Can I still go for a PhD? Yes, you can. But then you'll have to fund your own PhD. You can go and do it in US or UK, Germany, Japan, Russia, outside of India, where you can easily get a fellowship and you can do it. But yeah, the life will change there. And I have done a separate video on that, that what will be the challenges you will face when you go outside of India to do your PhD. So this is what I wanted to tell you that uh, at whatever career stage you are, there is always a way out, whether you have already exceeded the age limit or whether you are restarting your career after a career break or you could not start at all and move to some other industry, want to come back. There is always a way out. All you have to do is figure out. And on this positive note, I would like to encourage all of you to comment below whatever questions you might have, or you can directly write to me because many times career questions are very personal. So you can directly email, email me at shaker at biotechnica.org. Most of the time, I reply very fast, but sometimes it can get delayed. If I miss to reply to you, you can always send me reminder emails as well. So that's all for today. Thank you so much for watching and see you soon in the next one. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.